Hi, this is Lucia with The Art of Love. I'm a dating and relationship expert specializing in helping you get your ex back or get over your ex. And today I want to talk about breaking no contact. I have a comment here from someone who did just that and he lived to regret it. But before I do that, I want to first welcome back the No Contact Army. Have you been a good little soldier? And if you have, then you've downloaded the Silencio app to help you stay in no contact. The link is below every single video. And if you too would like to join our No Contact Army, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you're in. And to read our manual, go to nocontactsecrets.com where you can read two free chapters before purchasing the book. All right, so here is the comment of the guy who was a bad little soldier and he broke no contact. I broke no contact today after 28 days just to get the negative response you warn us that we will receive. F you anxiety. So someone asked, well, what did you say? What was their response? And he said, I asked if we could meet up to talk, followed by no response. I then went on an anxious roller coaster, stating that if you don't answer my messages or calls, I'm coming up there right now in my car. Great, great, just what every woman wants to hear. A threat that if you don't answer, I'm coming up there. That is pretty much the worst thing you can say to an ex. You can't force someone to talk if they don't wanna talk. And you should have just started with, hi, how are you? And if you didn't receive a response, then that obviously meant that she didn't want to talk. You don't just jump out of the gate and say, hey, do you want to meet up to talk? And then you don't receive a response and you freak out. So of course she had to respond to that. And she said, don't bother, I'm not in. And we have nothing to talk about. And that she doesn't want to get back together. It's been eight weeks since the breakup I've had some good days and some bad days. We live and learn, I guess. I just chose to take the hard way of experiencing rejection all over again. Yeah, I mean, the problem is that when you're so focused on getting an ex back, you don't see how you're coming across. And so you can't regulate your actions and your emotions. That's why if you can, it's good to have some coaching so that you don't make decisions like this and ruin any chance you may have had because now she's seen you acting like this and it's a huge turnoff. You know, no woman wants to feel threatened and be made to talk if they don't want to talk, especially if they've broken up with you. You know, it's one thing to break no contact and see if they're willing to talk to you, but it's another thing to try to force them to talk to you. And then finally, he concludes with, Hall of Stupidity, don't do it, people. My anxiety got the better of me. And to get the response I did just infuriates me. Well, I'm sorry, but what did you expect? That's what you get when you break no contact. They're not going to welcome you with open arms. If she had wanted to talk to you, she would have reached out. This is one of the main reasons you don't reach out to the other person because more likely than not, you are going to get a response that's going to infuriate you. We think we know best, but we don't. Stick to no contact and follow Lucia's advice. I've had to learn the hard way and head back down to zero. So hopefully this will make you see that if you're think, thinking of breaking no contact, it's probably not a good idea. And what should you be doing instead? If you have an anxious attachment style, work on your anxiety because that's the key to this whole thing. The reason that he did this, the reason that he acted this way and said the things he said was because of his anxiety. So I would suggest you read the book Attached to learn about attachment styles. If you need to get therapy, get therapy, nothing wrong with that. And focus on yourself because what you're trying to get from that person usually is an escape from reality. You're trying to fill a void. And in speaking to that, Someone left a brilliant comment under one of my videos, Mo Dickens. It's one of the most brilliant comments I've ever seen under any of my videos in all the years that I've been doing these videos. So basically he says, an addiction to a person is no different than any other addiction. It's used as an escape on an emotional level. Yes, there's dopamine, etc. in the physical sense of the addiction, but the whole reason the addiction began was a desire to escape the reality of life. 
the boredom, the sense that something's missing, etc. Well, perhaps something is missing, but that void cannot be filled by using another person to avoid facing our problems. The fixation is not on a person, not on love, but an escape, a desire for a distraction from our own mundane daily lives. They are simply a character on a TV show that distracted us, and sometimes characters are written out of a show. So instead of chasing them or fixating on another show character, make your own life a show that you look forward to watching. And that is brilliant, a brilliant analysis, because what most people are doing is they don't want to look at the things in their life that they're unhappy about, their own reality, and so they prefer an escape, and they use that escape through addiction, and in this case, it's addiction to a person. So as long as they're focused on that other person, they don't have to think about how miserable and unhappy you are. But until you do that, then you'll continue to make mistakes like this and chasing after people who don't want you and getting rejected and causing more and more trauma to yourself. Dismissive avoidance, they've figured that out. They don't rely on other people to fill a void. They're filling that void by themselves. That's why they're so independent. And therefore they don't chase anyone because they don't have generally that void to fill. As I said, they're filling it themselves. Okay, so I wanna hear from you comment below and let me know if you have ever broken no contact, if you were a bad little soldier, and what happened. And if you'd like my help to get your ex back, contact me at theartoflove.net. The direct link is below and we'll send you the rates. If you are listening to this as a podcast, please rate and review. If you found this video helpful, then please like, subscribe, and share. And finally, remember that love inspires, empowers, uplifts, and enlightens.